On the last show, I spoke about Ram Dalters and how you can make them work in a 4-3-3. On today's show, we're going to take a look at some of your comments and we are also going to try and craft a Ram Dalter into a 4-2-3-1. It has its own challenges and sometimes you need to be very careful of the transitions. <music> My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. The Ram Dauter can actually be quite a fun role to play with. He does defend. So don't think for one moment he doesn't track back and help you defend. Um, and I want to address some of the questions I received on the last video before we begin. I want to thank everybody for sending in their comments. Waylands, you managed to use a Ram Dauter with a poacher, the legendary Frankie Salami from FM18. Very nice. That is a very good way of setting up a Ram Dauter. I actually like the idea of using poachers whenever it comes to using a Ram Dauter simply because they don't move into the channels. Would a Ram Dauter work in a 424 with advanced forwards, a complete forward, and I'm currently using an inverted winger support and an inverted forward support? Um, it can work. You probably will want to play the Ram Dauter in the slot where you are currently using the inverted wing forward on support. It's a bit more challenging because you have to look at the central midfielder on the side of the round outer as well. I would probably use a role that either holds position or closes down aggressively on that side of the pitch. You can use one, but you want to be careful of the transitions. Those two central midfielders are going to be very important. Mud Blaster, you had a 4-3-3 with him and you played onto his side with a wing back behind him and AP from the middle on that side. You would push the left side heavy with the Ram Dauter who would often find space to get into goal scoring positions or you manage to assist. Now, using a wing back with a Ram Dauter is actually a good idea. If the Ram Dauter can't get into a goal scoring position, he can always offload it to the wing back. He can then enter the box and become a danger inside the box. Alternatively, the Ram Dauter can also create chances for other players, which is a good way of playing him. Uh, it's usually easier to get the Ram Dauter to work in a 4-3-3. Robert Powell, in the 4-2-3-1, you'd have the number 10 as an Angosh. The Ram Dauter can play 1-2s with him, open gaps in behind, leaving the probable poacher again up top. Would have to test it though and make sure both have the trade. Ideally, all attacking players would have the trade. Actually, yes, if you're going to play a, if you want to set up the 4 2 3 one in such a way with an Engash in the middle and a Ram Dauter on the left, you also want to try and make sure that a lot of the players up top have placed one twos, and you're probably going to be playing on shorter passing on a higher tempo. The challenge with that, doing that in a 4 2 3 one is going to be um, your backline because when you play with a 4 2 3 one those defenders, they get easily pulled up the pitch if you're playing on a very high defensive line. So if you want to set it up with an Engosh and you want to have the option of playing with one twos, looking to explore the channels, make sure that you've got very good central midfielders. Gary, you've uh, started a 4-3-3 DM white tactic where you've ha you have Ram Dauter on the left flank, on the right flank, a track with Tista with an AF on top. However, I love the idea that you mentioned about Porsche as I believe the AF will move into the channels and not give the Ram Dauter the space he needs. Yes. If you're using an AF, you've got to be very careful because the AF is going to go where the Ram Dauter is and then you're going to have other issues because he has left the defender. The defender is then there's going to be one more defender along with the fullback that he has to engage. And that can sometimes uh, give the, you know, cause problems. A lot of people like to use the AF or the DLF on support. The DLF on support is a fantastic role in a tactic that has got very good players. In that sense, you're camping and you're using vertical movement to move up and down. Then the Ram Dauter can enter the space that the DLF on support vacates. But how many of us have Manchester City kind of players? Oscar Richardson, another one who loves my role guides. You hope you will continue that series now. Yes, I plan to update some of the older role guides and make them more relevant for FM22. You've always struggled to use a Ram Dauter in my 5-2-3 tactic. One thing, only thing that ever works for me is a track what he's still playing narrow on the wing not sure why okay the problem with the 5 2 3 is you're playing deep and then you've got these two guys up top wide now the round router also sometimes needs a decoy which is going to be one of the central midfielders which is why in the 4 3 3 is so much more easier 
And then when you have a 4 2 3 1, you've got somebody high up the pitch, the AP, who's actually pulling the DM from side to side. When you're playing with a 5 2 3, then you don't have those options at all because you're going to use one of the central midfielders to push up. That makes your defense a bit more uh, vulnerable. So, what I would recommend is actually something that not a lot of people like to do. Turn both the central midfielders onto attack duties, use inverted wing backs to push through the middle. Then the two central midfielders, you can take one of them, turn him into a Mazala. It's a very risky strategy, but it can work. Salzella, when I tried recreating Nagelsmann's Munich, I tried to round out on the left, it take more risk on, yes. And Sane playing there, or any other player who can dribble to attack the inside left channel, with Davis going outside. Muller on EMS doing what he does. He put a lot of pressure on the pitch and the assist output was pretty impressive. You really need a good player there. This is a very, very good um, setup. Because if you're going to do the Nagelsmann Munich setup, then if you have the wing back going wide with the round out on his side of the pitch and you've got an AM on support or even an Angosh on support, what are you going to set up? What are you going to end up creating is a very nice overload down one side of the pitch. The round router can easily attack the space if you have like a roll in front that moves vertically not so much left and right and um, the poacher does that which is the reason why i love the poacher so much and you're going to also be able to generate loads and loads of assists from the round outer which is something that i noticed you've been able to do mark rankin you just started using a round outer for my lead team rafinha i pay him with a pressing forward and an inverted winger and a mazala coming from midfield on his side to support in a 4-3-3 seems to work okay yeah, the pressing forward still does tend to drift into the channels. And I actually have a lead safe as well. Yes, I've used Rafinha as a round outer in that setup. And on the other flank, I actually had Daniel James as a winger. So when I set the lead system up, I had a poacher, a round outer, and Daniel James bombing down the right flank as a winger. And I and I used somebody as a Mazala on attack in that setup. And I just can't remember who right now. And... Uh, one thing Leeds definitely needs is getting another um, central midfielder because they're short in that department. So I want to thank everybody for taking the time out to drop in your comments. I, I just felt that, you know, it's about time I sometimes answer those uh, questions or your comments on some of the videos. I truly appreciate the effort that you take to drop in these comments and I hope that I was able to answer some of your questions. I'm not going to cover the attributes needed for a round router again. I did that in the last video. So if you want to go check it out, you can. You can find out what the key attributes are for a round router in any kind of system. It's going to be the same. In a 4 2 3 1, there are certain traits I would also add. Now, I added these traits in the last show. I spoke about likes to be the offside trap. But I think in a 4 2 3 1, depending on how you want to play it, you can either go with likes to be the offside trap or place one twos. Now, there's a time and a place to use either one of them. If you want to use place one twos, your four two three one is going to be narrow. If you want to play likes to beat offside trap, then your four two three one can afford to be a bit more wider. And this is uh, the bring your tactics safe. Now, I wanted to try out a few things with a four two three one on this safe, and this is also the safe that we use um, for the show Bring Your Tactics when you come in on Wednesdays and I take a look at your tactics and we you know work on it together. And of course, if you want to bring, want to catch up with me on any of my live streams and ask me any questions, please feel free to join me then. I stream three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Now here I've got a 4231. It might look a bit strange to some of you, yeah, especially if you look at this. We're playing with the offside trap, high line of engagement, high defensive line. We're playing with prevent short goalkeeper distribution, but our trigger press is only slightly more often. That's because all these players in the final third have been told to tackle harder, right, and mark tighter. Now, what I've also done is we've got a configuration here where I want the poacher to move up and down, right? So he, he, poachers, they don't do anything too complicated. If they lose, they can't pass the ball, they look for a player that's near them. And we've got an AP here. We got DLP on defense here. We got ball-winning midfielder who's going to support this area of the pitch really well. The idea here behind this setup is if I win the ball on this side of the pitch, where this guy has also been told to hard tackle, then I could easily do a quick diagonal pass into this space for the round router to attack. The poacher is going to hold the attention of the central defenders, and if we are looking to create chances like we have to go camping we need to um, work a, a team around the round router can also create assists if the wing back on support 
does a natural overlap down the left. Some of you might be wondering, why is my pressing intensity so low? There's a very simple reason. I don't have a good team. Now, if I had a really good team, I'd probably be more comfortable pressing higher up the pitch. But my team isn't that good. And I'm more petrified of these two players being pulled out of position because it's really easy when you're playing with aggressive pressing and a high defensive line for these two players to engage defenders prematurely, opening up the center, leaving you vulnerable to balls played through the middle. Here's a build-up play. Our fullback is coming up the pitch. He plays it with the inverter winger. We draw enough of their players here. And I notice the space that has opened up for our round router down this side of the pitch. Our poacher is holding the attention of this defender. And you can see the defender has gone really close to him. We got a ape. We got one of our midfielders. This is our ball-winning midfielder who's actually quite high up the pitch and he's holding this player's attention. Now, the fullback has already uh, dragged a few players to him. Now we go to the inverter winger and now our playmaker has shifted into this position. Now the Ram Daughter has moved into the... He's ready to attack the channel. He goes in and he scores the first goal. The one thing I love about the Ram Daughter is the fact that he loves space. Now here he receives the pass, then he explores the space, finds himself in space and scores a beauty. Can you play a Ram Daughter with a DLF on support or of F9 or a complete forward, you know, have plenty of fluid roles in the final third, everybody moving around like little, you know, it was so cute. They're just moving everywhere. Of course you can. If you have the money to and the patience, uh, I don't have the patience. I just want to create a really simple tactic that works. In fact, we had a match against Rhea Hispalis. They are actually better than us but we were able to beat them 2-1 away from home using the same principles. It's so important to be able to win the ball in transition. We win the header, the inverter winger plays the ball over the top, our Ram Dauter gets inside to score. We get a chance to win the game and the Ram Dauter is brought down inside the box. We get a penalty, we convert it and we win the game. There are no extraordinary PIs in this tactic except for close down, tackle harder, mark tighter here, Clo tackle harder, mark tighter here, Tackle harder, Mark Taita here. This group is putting a lot of pressure on the final third. And when they get a chance to, they look to release this player. If there's anything you want to do, you can probably tell this guy to go direct and take more risk. And you can add this and then, you know, he might try more of those passes down that flank. I know I'm going to get requests for, where's the download link for this tactic? The idea behind these kind of shows is for me to share ideas with you guys so that you can go on, understand the principles and go and make your own tactics. For the guys on Discord, this is based off Mane's Revenge from FM20. Yes, I just changed the roles around. I just added the Ram Daughter and changed the striker's role to a poacher. Uh, there used to be an AM, now it's an AP because the APs are so sweet in FM22. I just made a few role changes and that was it. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, video and you found it useful. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. Now, I'm curious, what role guide should we do next? Let me know in the comments below. You guys stay safe. Take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.